Chapter 2, how to think about strategic games. Like what are the terminologies that are commonly used for uh, describing a specific game. What is the use of knowing all of these terminologies and different aspects of the game? We can go over that as well. So the key thing why this is important, if we understand the terminology, we can describe what game we are in. We can then understand why something's happening. An example, let's say a war, or let's say lots of layoffs, lots of hiring, a lockdown. There's so many things happening around us. We can explain why certain things are happening, what type of game we are playing, what type of game we are in. Once we can explain what's happening, we can then predict what will happen in the future because we know past actions. Once we can explain why what happened today and eventually predict what will happen in the future, we can take action by providing advice and prescription. So if we understand how games and strategies are played, we know there is lots of interaction happening between us and other people, us and our bosses, us and our spouses, us and our family, us and our friends, us with our place where we live, where we work, so many interactions. Understanding how those interactions work is super important. So let's go through some of the terminologies and different aspects of this game where strategy can help us. Yeah. So what are some of the terminologies that we will use? We will say and use the word strategy a lot. What is a strategy? A strategy is a complete action plan. It's a complete plan under every circumstances, listing out what you will do, why you will do it, and how you will do it. It's a complete plan. It's a game plan. It's a master plan of what you're doing, why you're doing it, right? For all situations. Payoff is basically an educated guess that you know as to what you will get if you made certain decision, right? So you assign a number for and give a specific outcome to a decision. If there is an expected outcome, because there's lots of probability associated with what will happen, then it's an expected guess. Um, we would assume people are risk averse, meaning they would prefer a constant payoff, sure shot payoff over a weighted average payoff or a probabilistic payoff. So payoff is basically what you get, what's the value you assign. We assume people are consistent and rational, meaning they'll always uh, know what they want. They will have complete knowledge of everything that's going on. They will be flawless in knowing their preferences and also executing on their preference in a reliable and a consistent way. So that's the assumption of rationality. So you will say, hey, the opponent or the player is rational. They expect the payoff or the value to be this much. That's their game plan and that's their strategy. We expect and assume that there is common knowledge. By this, what we mean is that the rules and the norms are somewhat given. You do have an influence towards changing the rules, but and there are some times when errors happen because you expect the other person to rationally behave, but guess what? They just they were not available to take that action for some reason or for whatever reason they just missed taking that action. So equilibrium assumes that both the players or all the players will have the best response and that they would reach to a steady state at some point. Uh, and evolutionary uh, dynamics assume that there will be one steady state at some point. Uh, dynamics primarily is incorporating the fact that there are certain new players, let's say a new manager comes in and decides to make mistakes because they didn't have complete knowledge, they didn't, decide, they didn't act rationally. And so there is aspects of new players coming in, learning and dynamically adjusting their behavior over time. Observation experiment, this is how you can actually validate in real life what happened when you made certain decisions and what kind of interactions you saw. So these are terms that we will use and we expect to understand like what do we mean by payoff, what do we mean by run an experiment, run, you know, there's an equilibrium state at this point and what kind of rules or common knowledge we have. So that's the terminology. Now let's look at like, you know, we, we, we went through this in the first chapter, but like a game has three things that are needed to win, right? And some proportion of skill is needed, some proportion of luck is needed, and a big proportion of strategy is needed, right? Where you actually can think through various aspects of a game. So let's break them down, yeah? So a game could be 
uh, a one-time play versus a repeated play. This is important. One-time play versus a repeated play. Let's say you are working with your boss. You have a strategic advantage, meaning you have an advantage towards some information that you know and your boss doesn't know. Remember, your interaction with your boss is a repeated interaction. They're going to judge you not just based on what you did with that, that information. Were you honest? And were you, you know, doing the right things all the time? And even with that first in instance? Or were you not? And they will think about this and use this as a repeated interaction. So whenever you have an advantage over something or someone, you might be benefiting in the short run but losing out in the big run if it's a repeated interaction. That person might, you might win against them in the short run, but they will be around. They will actually take revenge if you win over them in an unfair or in a wrong way. A simple example, let's say you are at work. You know your colleague who you work with is actually not doing their work well and they're actually just wrong. What do you do? Remember, you are gonna work with that colleague so many days, or it's a repeated interaction. You just observe something that they did wrong and you just don't like it. You have so many ways in which you can respond, but if you realize that this is a repeated game, you will attack this differently. That colleague could be a junior colleague. Eventually, that colleague could be your boss and they could haunt you throughout your career if you just took advantage of your position, of your power, then they will, you know, they'll make your life hell. So understanding what kind of games is this, this is a repeated game, one-time game, is super important to keep that lens in mind, yeah? So understanding what type of game you're playing, is it a single player that game or is it a multiple player, one player starting now and then you know someone else that you have to deal with later, so it's like players changing over time. And is that player gonna be the first one moving and then you get to move? Like, what's the sequence? So that's important, like who moves first? First movers typically get a first mover's advantage if they get it right. Second movers actually don't have to do all of that learning and throw away work that the first mover has to do. Apple, they're really innovative in several aspects of the products that they launch, but they're also late in the game towards several new innovative features, but they just nail it when, you, when they are like second in the market. They do it so well with some of those features that they don't have to put up all of these costs that these first players actually lost on, right? So it's important to know if there is a first mover advantage, is there gonna be significant network effects that this first mover advantage is gonna enjoy, and that the second mover actually is gonna be in a much worse off state, then you need to know like what kind of game it is. And should you be moving first with a clear signal to all of your opponents that, hey, you are in the game, and that they should back off, right? So there's advantages and disadvantages. So knowing that is important. Similarly, knowing interests of all the parties involved. You want to know what is it that's of interest to your opponent. What do they care about? What are, the, what are their values? What is their ranking of priority? What decisions have they made in the past and are they consistent to the decision that you expect them to make? So knowing your opponent's overall interest is important. And signaling to them like your intentions as well. And at the same time, getting them to reveal their true preferences is super important. So knowing interests of, of the game is super important. So strategy, you have to think through what kind of people are you working with? Is that the same person? Is it gonna be multiple times you're gonna be working with them? Do you have an advantage? You don't have an advantage? And like what kind of information asymmetry? If there is existing any information asymmetry? Or are we expected to have common knowledge, right? And complete knowledge for all the parties, right? But there is a lot of times when a lot of people don't have the full knowledge, nor do they have the capacity to do what the assumption of rationality expects them to do, which is flawless calculations and flawless execution. So that's a big assumption. But like, you have to understand like, what kind of equal information exists out there, or do you indeed have information advantage at your end? So there are different types of uncertainty. Um, Uncertainty due to external circumstances is external uncertainty. Strategic uncertainty is not knowing what your other player is going to do. So there's strategic uncertainty and external uncertainty. So that's this part about like information. So information is one aspect of strategy. Thinking through interests of other people, 
What kind of uh, interaction is this? And finally, like rules of the game. Like who's going to set the rules of the game? So there's this, this thing called a pre-game. This is where the real game is actually played. This is when certain participants come in and establish rules, establish like some sort of uh, protocol. If you can establish those protocols and influence these rules in your favor, you've already won a lot of this. So doing the pre-game, knowing when the decisions are being made, you cannot act after your manager tells you, we have decided to lay you off. That's too late. You've got to be in the pre-game. You got to know how they make decisions. You got to know what is important to them. You got to know and position yourself in the right parts at the right time, and be actually in a place where it's super hard to get 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 you off. So pre-game, game, don't play the game and then realize that hey, I'm too late. A lot of people, and the example in the book that I really liked was, a lot of people decide to retire at 40 and they start thinking at at 40 that hey, I'm going to retire. You can start early. You start early, save early, invest early, hopefully have enough investment returns supporting you. So pre-game, super important. Game before the game, right? And you need to understand whether people are gonna move sequentially, and there's gonna be like one step happens and then there's, there's two possibilities. Is it like a three-step movement, or is it gonna be like simultaneous, where you will have some sort of a payoff metric saying, hey, player A and player B, they both act at the same time, or is it going to happen in a sequence, in some sort of a tree fashion? So you need to know what kind of moves are these. Sequential, or are they going to be simultaneous? Because sometimes both of these players are thinking at the same time. right? So there are different aspects of the game that we need to start thinking. Imagine, now we are trying to expand our thinking in so many ways, primarily so that we can explain what happened with different aspects of strategy that, that contributes towards game playing. And so that we can predict and have a better chance of knowing what the future holds, and thus subscribe, um, prescribe, and advise what next steps to take. So that's chapter two. How to understand and think about strategic games with vocabulary that we're going to use, different aspects that are important to think, and why ultimately it's helpful. All right. Thanks.